Hi everyone, Gary Coleshill here and you are in the right place. We're here today with our special guest, Scott Rulon of Rulon Financial. And Scott's going to talk today about how you can have a comfortable uh, retirement with a constant stream of income. So without much further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Scott. So Scott, you have the floor. Take it away. Thank you much, so much, Gary. I'm so happy to be with you today. You know what? I know your time is valuable and we'll make this as close to 30 minutes as we can. Um, just brief introduction about me. I've been a CPA and financial advisor uh, for about 35 years now. Um, I've helped hundreds, literally hundreds, maybe even thousands of people retire. And I've probably done tens of thousands of tax returns in my life. Um, so here's some here's some information about me. Um, there's my phone number, 602-824-2299, and my email, Scott at RulonFinancial.com. Um, you can feel free to contact me at either one of those. And so here's a picture of my wife and I. We were at a local um, Chamber of Commerce event here where they, they have um, games with knights, and so they had jousting and sword fighting and all kinds of stuff. Um, at this point, I've actually been married 27 years, and my son, I'm proud to say, has graduated from college and now works for a company called Intel. I'm sure most of you know that. Very proud of him. But today, let's get back to the subject. We're going to talk about how to build a retirement recovery plan that protects your money from a crisis. So certainly, as we speak today, we live in what I would call a pretty divisive world. Um, people are evenly split down different lines, but today let's get beyond all that and let's show you no matter where you come from, the only way to have a successful retirement and the five critical steps you must have to protect it. So remember this information is presented by a licensed professional and not specific to any one person's circumstances. To the extent that this material concerns tax matters, well, guess what? I'm a CPA. I know all about taxes. It is not intended or written to be used and cannot be used by a taxpayer for the purpose of avoiding penalties that may be imposed by law. This presentation is provided for general information and educational purposes based on publicly available information. So now that we've got our wonderful disclosure about it, let me tell you why I'm passionate about income planning. Um, some of you remember in college or maybe in your dorm room or perhaps going to the local laundromat and seeing that bulletin board up on the, on the side there with people having all their ads. But I think many of you, when it comes to looking at retirement, when you're looking at your various options that are out there, you feel like you're looking at a bulletin board and don't exactly know what you're seeing. So I wanted to give you a brief picture here. Um, I'm gonna give you a date on this in case you didn't know. This is actually March 24th, 2020. And this is a trader number 464 in the New York Stock Exchange. Guess what's happened that day? That day, um, the stock market actually went down 30%. So you can bet he's a little stressed. So we wanna get you to the point that you're not stressed about your retirement or what happens after you're done with your uh, regular job life. So here's the traditional retirement income model. Um, many years ago, we had these things called pensions. And if you still work for city, state, or federal government, especially police or fire or school teacher, you probably still have a pension. Um, the next layer on top of that was social security. And on top of that was your own savings. Unfortunately, that model has been broken. And today, only about 4% of us actually have a pension plan. And then we have Social Security on top of that, which is designed to cover 30 to 40% of your retirement. But for most of us, guess what's happened? Your employees have put the board burden, uh, actually the burden on you to save. So that's through something called a 401k, 403b, an IRA, a 457. So most of you are probably familiar for at least one of those terms. And so these are obviously some internet pictures here. And so when you look at these, the amount of choices for retirement are dizzying. 
This is kind of like that bulletin board you saw earlier, but it's only busier. A little crazy, isn't it? So we want to focus in on something very specific. So I wanted to show you, here's an old television commercial. This was put out by a company called Boya. And what they did is they talked about what's your number. So they really wanted you to key in on a lifetime number and savings. And if you got to that place, your retirement would be filled with everything you could wish. Unfortunately, retirement is not really about keying in on a number. Um, it's about keying in on income. And who, how many of you have seen this crazy guy? I mean, he's got a radio show today. He's very popular, you know, in church circles as well, and made his name by cutting up credit cards with big scissors. For those of you that don't know him, guess what? This is Dave Ramsey. Many of you on TV have seen this madman. Uh, this is Kramer. Um, uh, Mr. Kramer actually invests for a charitable remainder trust that he owns. Probably most of you don't know that. But he's got all these bells and whistles and talks about how certain stocks are good and certain ones aren't. But can you rely on his information either? I think not. And so I wanted to show you a few recent um, newspaper and magazine articles. Retires might run out of money 10 years before they die. Deep bench, the crisis in America for retirement savings. Americans do not have enough retirement savings. Really? America has the widest retirement savings gap of the developed nations and it's only getting worse. That's just crazy. So we have many risks in retirement from regulation to sequence of returns. But there's really four of them that I would really like to focus in on today. That's longevity, stock market risk, income taxes, and inflation. And you know one thing? I don't want you to be like this guy. There was a, there's a man who came to me several years ago. Um, he brought in his 401k rollover, and he said, Scott, I'm ready to retire. And there was about $130,000 sitting in his account. And I asked him, Jim, so how much do you spend a year? And so he told me it was something like 30, 35,000. I told him, guess what? You're going to dissipate your retirement in three or four years. So I don't want you to be in the place the Jim was. Um, we were able to help Jim out, however, and we did increase the chances of a better retirement. And I can tell you that by the time we got done with Jim's stuff, he and his wife, left a ha happy couple. So here's the four major risks, longevity, stock market, income taxes, and inflation. So I believe truly in my heart, the only way for a successful retirement is through an income plan that protects your money from four key risks. We call this the retirement income framework. So we want to learn how to spend confidently regardless of the economy. So whether you want to take care of your grandkids, travel, take a trip to the Vatican, beautiful place, by the way. You want to do an extra hobby like photography, or maybe some of you just want to go out for dinner a little bit more often. Uh, we want to be able to spend confidently no matter what's happening in the outside world. So let's talk a little bit about the retirement income framework. We're going to help you identify, protect, reduce, invest, and manage your retirement. The first thing we want to do is determine your current financial status. So how many of you have a junk drawer like this? You know, our, in fact, our junk drawer looks a lot like this. Um, after you walk in the front door and take a ride into the kitchen and you pull up in that drawer, we have a drawer that looks a lot like this, and I'll bet a lot of you do too. So here's the thing. Many of you have what I would call a financial drunk junk drawer. It is a lot like that gadget junk drawer. And so we have things like Social Security, life insurance, savings, IRAs, 401ks. But how do we use all that? Sometimes it's just a little mind boggling. So here is a 
article that was put out a few years ago um, from the Harvard Business Review. For those of you that don't know what Harvard Re Business Review is, it is the publication put out by Harvard Business School. And the author of this article, who's a professor at Harvard, his name is Robert C. Merton. He said, our approach to savings is all wrong. We need to think about monthly income, not net worth. Remember that crazy thing where we saw those men walking by the elevator with their number? As we know, it's really not about a number. It's about having the right amount of income when we retire. Uh, just a quick reminder here for those of you that didn't get my name. Again, it's Scott Rulon. My number is 602-824-2299. And my email is scott at rulonfinancial.com. On with the show. So in retirement, really, we have two pots of money. We have our essential pot and our discretionary pot. So what do I need, need my retirement income to do? And what do I want my retirement income to do? One is essential and the other is discretionary, which just really means I can choose how I spend my money. So for the purposes of this example, let's pretend like your essential expenses are $5,000 per month and your discretionary expenses are $2,000 per month. So one, the essential one, I prefer to call my protected income number. That's the amount of money that I will be getting in each and every month, often called mailbox money, to spend on those things that I have to pay for. So now that we've determined somebody's current financial status, let's talk about ways to maximize your lifetime income. So this is a recent article in Time Magazine it said securing at least the base level of lifetime income should be every retiree's priority, at least if they want to live happily ever after. So most of you, some of you may recognize this picture, some of you may not, but this is actually a picture of Desert um, Death Valley in California. It is one of the lowest places in the world. I think it's second lowest compared to the Dead Sea. But let's pretend you were driving along this highway and you saw that your gas tank was on a quarter tank and you came up upon a road sign that said next gas station 100 miles. What would you do? Yeah, I think you might slow down your car a little bit like, like I would to make sure I could certainly make it to the next gas station so we could get our way through Death Valley before we knew it. So I wanted to give you an example of what an average retirement looks like today. Um, if you are male, age 65, chances are you're going to live in retirement till about age 83. If you are a female, about 20 years, so that's to age 85. And believe it or not, if you are a married couple, there's at least a 25% chance that one of you will live well into your 90s. So you can see that retirement lasts sometimes as long as your working life did. So we want to make sure we have enough income to provide for that. So what is my definition of protected income? Well, protected income should be guaranteed for life. It should be backed by a government or a financial institution that's very credit worthy. It should increase over time with inflation. And it should in increase each year you choose not to start income. So what are our three sources of protected income? Well, for about three or 4% of you, you have a pension plan, which will provide mailbox money each and every month. Um, for about 97, 98% of the rest of you, you have social security. And that the third way to do it is through um, something called an annuity. Annuity, let me give you a really simple definition unless in case you're confused. It is simply a retirement account at an insurance company. So let's talk a little bit about social security. You may or may not know that you can first apply for social security at age 62. 
Now, if you apply at 862, you will get about 75% of what your full retirement benefit is or full retirement age, often called FRA by Social Security. Um, if you choose to wait till 63, you get $1,600. You could get $1,600 on up until you reach that full retirement age and get your, um, in this case, your $2,000 benefit. So the only hard part is if I choose to take it early, you know, according to today's standards, I can only make about $17,000 in earned income and they start taking away one, $2 for every dollar I make over my full retirement amount. It's a little crazy. Now, if I choose to wait until full retirement age, I can earn as much as I want from a job and I don't have to worry about them clawing back some of my retirement benefits. Now, if I choose to wait till later, um, I can receive about another 8% a year and that maximizes out at age 70. So one of the things you have to make a choice of is do I wanna get my money early and not earn as much between age 62 and 65 or if I want to get more later on, it's really an individual choice by everybody. And so if we were to look at today, anybody that was born after 1960, your full retirement age is actually age 67 today. So this just goes in, shows you a little bit of those increases that can re that can happen to you after age 66 or 67, depending on when you were born. Um, Social Security does offer some inflation protection. Um, sometimes the problem with that inflation protection is my Medicare premium tends to go up each and every year. And sometimes that's more than I got my extra inflation protection. So this shows you a little bit of difference on a, on a graph. Um, if we look at the gray box here, that's what we'd receive if we claim at age 62. Um, if we look at age 66, that's the dark blue box. And if we claim it at age 70, that is the light blue box. So if you ever get a social security statement each and every year, um, this is actually what it looks like. And what I would re recommend that you all do is go to this website right here, myaccount.socialsecurity.gov. If you do there, you can see what your anticipated Social Security benefits are. Um, one of the important things about looking at this statement, and this has certainly happened in my family, we actually saw a couple of years where they had credited my spouse with zero. Now that was not correct, of course, because she had worked those years. And so we needed to go back to Social Security and let them know what the correct, correct amount is. But Social Security, at least they say in this example, will replace about 40% of your annual pre-retirement earnings. Um, the crazy thing today is with inflation, I think that's really only about 30%. So we need to really be saving a bit more. So now we've certainly talked about uh, pension and Social Security. Now let's talk a little bit about annuities. What is an annuity? Well, in case you wanted to know, it's a personal Social Security-like stream of income guaranteed for life from a top-rated insurance company. Um, we're not going to discuss any particular insurance company today, but just so you know, there's several of them out there that do these kinds of functions. So here's an example of an annuity withdrawal example. So these are different amounts that you could take at each age. And a lot of the annuities today actually have a guarantee of a, somewhere between 5 and 7% increase guaranteed each and every year. So that's nice to know because that keeps me with, with inflation. And so like any financial product out there, um, you will hear people talking about how annuities are bad, how annuities are good. Um, some of the people that talk bad about annuities, if any of you remember this person's name, Jane Bryant Quinn was not really a big fan of annuities. And 
You know, most of the knocks of annuities come from limited liquidity. So in some ways, annuities function a lot like a CD. If you take out money early from it, yeah, you're going to get hit with some surrender charges. So I would say don't do it. Um, a lot of one of the other knocks about annuities was always fees. Now, that, that's certainly true in the variable annuity world where fees can be as high as 4%. Um, but in the fixed annuity world, I think you'll find most of our fees less than 4%. But here's the beauty about annuities, and this is why I think you should take your time and take a look at them. They not only provide principal protection, guaranteed lifetime income, but also inflation protection. So now that we've talked about how to identify your current financial status, maximize your guaranteed lifetime income, let's talk about that thing everybody hates, income taxes. So it's probably especially there on the horizon because we're getting so close to the end of the year. So let's talk about what the top marginal tax rates from 1913 to like 1920 had been. Well, in case you didn't know, it is higher than you knew. <laughs> um, the average top tax rate over the last 70 years has really been 57.3%. And that doesn't even count your real estate taxes, your sales taxes, and your excise taxes. So we certainly do pay a lot of tax in America. So when we're talking about taxes, there are some deductions out there. Um, there's the mortgage interest deduction. There's the child exemption, which, by the way, doesn't exist anymore. Um, they've traded that out for a higher standard deduction. And certainly there's contributions made to qualified charities. Well, most of us, if we're getting to be our age, we're getting to the point where most of our mortgage is probably paid off. So you're not going to have a lot of interest deduction there. Um, child exemptions, by the time you try retire, many of us, our kids have probably all grown up. In fact, my son has. Um, he's already working in the world, uh, as I'm sure most of your sons and daughters are as well. And qualified contributions. Well, there are a few people that actually put enough into charitable deductions to pass that $26,000 standard deduction for married filing joint people. So in life, I'd like to just tell you, we really have three buckets of money. There's actually a fourth one here, and I'll talk briefly about that. So we have our taxable bucket. Um, as you can see from the pail, it's got many leaks in it. So that comes from interest, dividends, our W-2s, our self-employment income, our 1099s. We've got our tax deferred bucket. So that's for things like 401ks, IRAs, 403Bs. So remember, it's tax deferred, not tax exempt. The other bucket that's not mentioned on here is what I call the partially tax bucket. So for those of you that have rental real estate, because of something called a depreciation pass-through, um, you will not pay full tax on that. And the last bucket is a tax-free bucket. So there are Inside the tax-free bucket or 529 plans, Roth IRAs, um, index in universal life insurance. Those are always ways to receive our money tax-free. So Roth is a tax advantage individual retirement account that has no income tax on withdrawals. The only part of that that's not so good is if you are a high wage earner and you make more than $206,000 a year, you can't contribute to an IRA. Um, Index Universal Life Insurance is a Roth IRA-like account with a unique combination of tax-deferred growth, tax-free distribution, and tax-free wealth transfer. I know what most of you are thinking. You would think that life insurance was just for when you die. Um, absolutely not. There are tax-free advantages to life insurance that you can pull out tax-free withdrawals for most of your life. So in America, let's talk about the top 25% and the bottom 75%. So you'll be surprised at what it takes to be in the top 25%. So we have these people out there like Susie Orman. I'm not going to knock her here or Dave Ramsey. 
And so if you're Susie Orman or Dave Ramsey and you have lots of products to sell on TV or on the radio, which group of people would you choose to cater to? You got it, the bottom 75%. But what if you've done everything that Susie and Dave says? What are you gonna do next? So I would just like to let you know that the top 25% actually pay 86% of all the taxes in America. Hard to believe, but I've seen the statistics from the, from the IRS. Um, this list is usually about two or three years behind, but that's literally what I've seen. And so um, when this PowerPoint was written to be in the top 25%, you made $83,682. Wow, isn't that crazy? 83,000 gets you in the top 25%. Sometimes that, for some of you, that may seem like a lot. For other of you, it seems like very little. So let's talk about the stock market. So our average stock market return over three years for the S&P is 10%. Over 10 years, it's 13%. Over the last couple of years, you know, it's actually been down a little bit. The thing is here, too many of you are too worried about emotions and you don't ever give the stock market a chance to work its magic. In fact, if you've ever heard of the efficient frontier, that actually takes place over a 27 year time period. Um, so many of you tend to buy high and where do you sell? You sell low, but what should we be doing? Well, you know, we should be doing just the opposite, certainly. So this is the stock market over about the last 75 years. You notice there's some ups and there's some downs. But the thing we don't know is when we retire, will the stock market be up or down? So if it's down when we first retire, that could put us in a precarious situation. So the question is not if, but how many times will the stock market drop during your retirement? Well, the thing is, we just don't know. And so now that we've talked a little bit about, about investing, we you probably want to know, since life changes, so should your plan. And so one of the things we're proud to do is provide annual performance reviews for those of you that are looking forward to a comfortable retirement plan. Um, we will help you put together for free, by the way, an income plan summary. Um, we will look at illustrated plus actual results of your retirement. We'll give you an overall performance review. And we'll also help you with a needs assessment checklist. So let's go over really quick with what we talked about today. We talked about current re how the current retirement income model is broken. And the, really the only way for a successful retirement is through an income plan that protects you from the four key risks, longevity, stock market risk, income taxes, and inflation. The retirement income framework is a five-step roadmap that helps you to spend confidently in your retirement. So many of you probably recognize this as an airline cabin. So when you hop on board an airplane, do you have confidence that your pilot is gonna get you where you wanna go? Absolutely. So the thing is, when you hit that retirement flight, shouldn't you also be confident that it's gonna work for you as well? And so one of the things we like to help people do is a retirement income shortfall analysis. We will help you provide your retirement success for a yearly breakdown of account withdrawals and a notification of income shortfalls, as well as recommendations on how to enhance your score. So I'm gonna go through one scenario here. I actually have four on this, but we're just gonna go over the one today. And so this is a male age 55 and a female age 52. Their current income is about 150,000 a year and their desired retirement income is $120,000 a year. They have about a million dollars in invested assets and they are willing to put $30,000 a year into contributions. So unfortunately here, Social Security is the only protected income source they have. So it was our recommendation they reposition $300,000 of their investable assets into a deferred annuity. 
Next thing, um, they have a lot of assets that are in taxable and tax deferred buckets and not utilizing any pre-tax sources. So we redirected 30,000 of, of their annual savings into an indexed universal life policy so they can have some tax-free withdrawals. Now, currently 100% of their savings is exposed to stock market volatility. So you have a 50-50 chance when you retire of the market going up or going down. Um, so while we don't care much if it goes up, we do wanna protect if it goes down. So we recommended some protected income sources to establish to cover essential expenses. So what we did for this couple is um, when we first started out, took a look at their report card, they had about a 26% chance of living comfortably into retirement. They only had 22% protected income and they had remaining assets after all their spend down of $802,000. So after our recommendations, we actually moved their probability up to a 95% chance of having a successful retirement. They have protected income of 82%. And guess what? They have a lot more remaining assets because they didn't have to spend down on all those stocks and bonds in their 401ks. So I'm just going to skip some of these other ones. Um, but really what you can see here is we've helped lots of people um, live a more successful retirement. Remember, you retire once, we've helped people retire hundreds or even thousands of times. So don't you owe it to yourself um, to come in for an appointment and we can do a free retirement income shortfall analysis. We will conduct a 60 minute exploratory meeting gather your latest account statements, calculate your protected income number, complete the client assessment form, and review your analysis with you for a follow-up meeting. In fact, one of the things we wanna give you today for free for those who ask, remember you have to ask, is a retirement lifestyle worksheet. So we use this worksheet to estimate your retirement expenses and calculate your protected income number. So, please take back control of your retirement now. We will for free, that is without cost, perform a retirement income shortfall analysis and give you a retirement lifestyle income worksheet. So what if I already work with an advisor? Well, I certainly understand that many of you do. Um, sometimes we need a second opinion, why not? And the other thing is, if your advisor's not talking to you about these things that we've talked about today, I think getting a second opinion is a very important thing today. And if you don't even have a first opinion, um, better opinion one than opinion none. <laughs> so it's really time to get started. So will I be sold something at the point, Matt? No, that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people to a place where they can retire successfully. So how much savings do I need to have? Well, for different people, obviously it's different amounts, but if you don't get together with us, how can we help you determine if you will have the right amount? So um, we will be happy to fill in an appointment, an appointment form for you. Obviously, since we're doing this on the internet, we cannot uh, hand out a sheet at the back of the room but we would be more than happy to, if you will either give us a phone number or an email, we'll be glad to get you started in this process. So I want you to all be in a place where you have either have stacks of silver and you can be like this man standing on the edge of what looks like the Waimea Canyon um, on Kauai and just living a retirement dream instead of the retirement nightmare. So remember, please request um, your appointment form and your, your worksheet so we can work out what your essential uh, expense number is. And any of you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to give me a call at 602-824-2299 or email me at scott at Rulon Financial or our host can certainly put up his information in there, Gary. You could put it in the chat 
or question and answer about how they can contact you, but it would be our pleasure to help you navigate into retirement with some experienced financial pilots. Um, thank you so much for attending. I know that we're right at about that um, half an hour here. We're running just a tiny bit late. Um, but before we go, I just wanted to see if any of you had any questions that you wanted to answer right now. And so since it's always hard to ask the first question, hey, Gary, why don't you ask the first question? Well, the first question actually that I have, Scott, is that, uh, you know, obviously it's uh, good if uh, to start, even if you start with a little, it's best to start with something to get the ball rolling. Uh, in the words of Tom Hopkins, the real estate trainer, if you don't know where you're going, you're going to end up somewhere else. So I think it's, it's important that uh, you fill out the survey at the end uh, and that if you want extra information on any of these things, that you put it in the, in the uh, form that comes up at the end. Um, I think a good question, though, is, is basically how much do they, they need to get started? What is the... Uh, you know the minimum amount uh, to get to at least get their foot on the rung of the ladder here, and uh, you know a journey of a whatever it is ten thousand miles starts with a single step. What would they need at least to to get something? You know, a uh, minimal amount of money in to get rolling. Well, Gary, honestly, I think that if you haven't started now, is an awful fine time to do it. So certainly we could help you set up a monthly plan to get you started. Um, but this is why it's essential to put together a budget or why Dave Ramsey kind of calls a flexible spending plan. So let's allocate a certain amount that we can put towards our retirement if we're not already doing it. So um, we want to help, we want to help as many as we can. So that that's really our goal. We don't necessarily put down a minimum amount. Um, but we would have, be happy to help you get started or help you plan for the future with what you've already got, because it's really important in a, to live a successful retirement that you have the right amount of income. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you very much for, for that, Scott. And remember, uh, everyone, that that form... It's very brief. It's really just for your, your contact details. That form will pop up when we uh, leave the webinar. It will pop up in your browser. And you're certainly welcome to ask on there about the uh, retirement worksheet as well. And uh, also you can put on there, if you wish, uh, to set up a consultation with Scott, which is complimentary, by the way, um, after the webinar. And all the contact details are in the chat. Uh, Scott's phone number again is 602-824-2299. Email scott.rulon29 at gmail.com. Uh, my number's up there as well. Feel free to call me as well. 888-894-2929. And you can certainly email me as well. Gary C at eliteprospeakers.com. So, um, that's pretty much it. We appreciate your time today and being here. Thank you. It was a, a good sized group. Appreciate that. And hope we can be of help to you. So thank and then you. remember, Gary, we do have a drawing. We do indeed. For uh, restaurant.com gift card. And so here's here's the challenge for this. The first one who can put in the chat my phone number completely spelled out will win the retirement. Will win the restaurant.com gift card. So if you can put in my phone number really quickly in this chat, you will be the one that wins. Okay. Come on, everyone. Let's go. Okay, and we have a winner there, just a private message from Eric Swanson. So, Eric, you will be receiving the gift card. Um, give me about an hour after the webinar, and we'll shoot one over to you. Thank you very much, everyone else, for being here, and don't forget to fill up that quick uh, survey at the end. Appreciate it. 
And congratulations, Eric. And thank you very much, Scott. Absolutely. Bye for now. I'm going to stop recording now. <laughs>